Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam at Historic Travels and I'd like to thank everybody and welcome you to another video. And before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and to thank everybody who tuned in to the live stream a couple of days ago. Thank you guys, it was a ton of fun and I hope to do another live stream again really, really soon. All right, everybody, well, hey, let's get into today's topic. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what happened to the Titanic right after it left the surface. Now, in a previous video, we've already talked about what happened to Titanic's stern after she split in two. So in this video, we're going to focus more on the front of the ship and talk about some key areas of the ship and try to explain the damage that we see on the wreck of the Titanic today. However, one thing to keep in mind when watching this video, we are not going to be talking about how the wreck of the Titanic has degraded over time. Today, in this video, we're going to be focusing more on what happened to Titanic right after it left the surface and see if we can explain some of the damage we see on the wreck today that was not caused by the ship just sitting at the bottom of the ocean for the past hundred years. Another question we're going to talk about in this video is also what happened to the Titanic's bridge? How did the bridge go from looking like this to looking like this. As you can see from this picture, the only thing left on the bridge is the mechanism that held the ship's wheel in place. So what happened to the Titanic's bridge and what caused it to be in this shape today? The first thing we need to talk about in order to properly answer this question is to take a look at the wreck of the Titanic itself. As you can see from this picture, the bow of the Titanic is dug into the seafloor all the way up to the anchor. However, the further towards the back of the ship you go, the more of the ship that isn't dug in. So you can actually see the bottom of the ship just resting on the seafloor and it isn't dug in. So what caused this? But if we take a closer look at the back part of Titanic's bow in order to answer this question, we discover another mystery. Why is the back section of Titanic's bow, like the top part of the Titanic's deck, completely collapsed in like this? Did it happen over time as the ship degraded on the seafloor? Or did something happen during the sinking that actually caused the front or the back part of Titanic's bow to collapse like this? The first thing we need to go over in order to properly answer this question is explain exactly how the Titanic's bow went down. Now, as we know from other videos, the Titanic hit an iceberg, it flooded, it sank. But you see, the Titanic's bow was completely flooded when it went under because it had time to slowly flood and sink very, very slowly. So because of that, the Titanic's bow had no air pockets in it. So that meant that when the Titanic broke in two and the bow headed for the bottom, it was completely full of water. So there were no air pockets or anything inside the ship to influence the sinking. Now, the other thing to consider is the Titanic's bow itself, the front of the ship. The front of the ship, because it's this shape, allowed the Titanic to kind of get, it allowed it to streamline the water a little bit. So what I mean is it acted almost like an airplane under the ocean. But now I'm, I mean that very, very lightly. When the Titanic went underwater, it was more or less dropping like a rock. But because of how the ship was built and the angle at which the ship was falling, it allowed the ship to get some slight aerodynamic qualities under the water. So what I mean is if the ship fell down five spaces, it would move forward one space and it just continued on this trend to the bottom of the ocean. You see, this forward motion would explain why the bow of the Titanic is dug in so deep into the seafloor as we see in this picture. However, there is another part of the Titanic wreck that could also provide some evidence to prove the fact that the Titanic's bow did plane forward in this manner. And this piece of Titanic would be none other than the Titanic's crow's nest. You see, the position of the crow's nest on the Titanic's wreck gives some incredible insight into the way that the bow of the Titanic behaved after it left the surface. So just to give you guys a little bit of context here, the Titanic's crow's nest was attached to this giant tower, which is called a mass. And this tower is the tallest structure on the Titanic. And you see, this tower offers some incredible insight into how the Titanic behaved right after it left the surface due to its position on the wreck. So if you take a look at the Titanic's mast tower and the crow's nest as it exists today on the seafloor, you'll notice that it has been knocked completely backwards and is resting on the spot where the bridge used to be. So this would imply that a very, very strong force was acted upon the tower as the Titanic sank and fell to the bottom of the ocean. So you see, the location of the Titanic's mast on the wreck doesn't just show possible evidence of the Titanic planing forward as it went, as it fell to the bottom of the ocean, but it also could show evidence to what possibly could have happened to the Titanic's bridge. So here's my theory as to what happened to the bridge. I think that as soon as the Titanic went below and began its journey to the bottom of the ocean, that this tower fell backwards and landed right on top of the bridge. And I think the tower began to bounce around a little bit, tearing up the bridge. You have to remember the bridge structure, this little shelter right here, 
is was it was only made of very very light wood it wasn't that thick or sturdy at all so i think the tower was bouncing around and tearing up the bridge and then also due to the fact that a titanic was planing down like this the slight aerodynamic properties that the ship was picking up the rush of water flowing over the ship could have also been another factor i think the mass tower knocked open a section of the bridge and then the water rushing past it just ripped the bridge clean off of the ship and that's why we don't see any evidence of it left on the sea floor today now anything that was left over as i said it was just what it could have just degraded on its own as well but still i think it's very very plausible that the mass tower and the forces acting on the bridge structure as the titanic was going to the bottom is a big reason why we don't see any trace of it today now that we've covered the front part of the Titanic's bow, let's take a moment to talk about the back part of the bow section of the ship as well. You see, the back part of the ship, as shown in this picture, is completely collapsed in and is in much worse shape than the front part of this section of the wreck. The first thing we need to talk about to try to explain why the back of the bow section looks the way it does is the fact that the Titanic did break in two in the final stages of the sinking. Now when the Titanic broke in two, the section of the ship that was closest to the breakup was extremely structurally compromised due to the breakup. So that part of the ship had nowhere near the strength as it did before the breakup. However, I do not believe that the damage to the back part of the Titanic happened while the Titanic was on its way to the seafloor. All of the forces that were acting on the front of the ship on its way to the bottom would not have been able to act on the back of the ship due to the angle at which the Titanic was falling to the seafloor. Now, I think three things happened that caused the back part of the Titanic's bow section to be in the shape that we see today. Number one was that the ship broke in two. So this section of the ship was already very weak structurally due to the breakup. Number two, I think a huge, huge part of the damage was due to the Titanic's impact with the sea floor, like when it actually hit the bottom of the ocean. Because you got to think, they think it took the Titanic about 10 minutes to reach the ocean floor. So that means it could have been traveling somewhere between 30 to 40 miles per hour when it slammed into the ocean floor. And that part of the ship, this section right here that was greatly damaged by the breakup, would have nowhere near the strength to actually withstand the forces of this massive ship slamming into the ocean floor. So I think that is a huge account for what happened to it. And the third and final thing that I think influenced it was something called a downblast effect. So what exactly is a downblast effect? A downblast effect occurs when a massive object like a ship is sinking, well, has sunk, and then it's rapidly falling to the sea floor and falling very fast. So as the ship is falling through the water and on its way to the bottom, it's displacing and moving a huge amount of water with it. So as this ship is falling, directly behind it is this massive amount of water that is following the ship down to the bottom of the ocean, maybe a little less or about the same amount of water as the entire mass of the ship. So if this theory is correct, then the moment the Titanic's bow touched the bottom, it was still more or less intact. But then the strain from both the impact of the seafloor and the massive downblast effect could have been what caused the back part of the Titanic's bow to collapse like we see today on the wreck. So yeah, in conclusion, I think it's entirely possible that both the impact with the seafloor and the downblast effect were huge, huge reasons as to why the back part of the Titanic's uh, bow section is in the shape that it's in today. And the downblast theory could also explain why some of the little details from the Titanic's bow section aren't on the wreck today. A good example would be the, uh, the Titanic's compass tower, this tower structure that was in between the second and third funnel. Now this was extremely close to the breakup zone and it's possible that it fell off when the Titanic broke in two, but it's also possible that the downblast effect just crushed it or broke it or swept it away. Uh, we, we really don't know and no trace of the compass tower has ever been found on the wreck. So yeah, I think that theory is entirely possible. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you all learned something and found it fun as well. I have had a lot of fun making these videos and I'd just like to take a moment to thank all my new subscribers and everybody who's been leaving me comments down below and everyone who's been tuning into my live chats as well. I really enjoy those. I know we'll be another one really soon. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I hope you all are having a good day and I hope you all stay safe out there. Y'all have a good one.